NASCAR. Who loves NASCAR? What about NHRA? National Hot Riding Association. Uh, have any of you ever been down to Heartland Park or Thunder Hill Speedway to the race tracks? Both, uh, pretty sure, pretty sure, uh, racing and drag racing um, down near Topeka. Anybody ever been down there? Um, well, if you have, you've been lucky enough to see some of the greatest sports that Americans have developed, and also some of the greatest machines humans can strap themselves into and experience great speed. Speed again being distance covered or traveled over a certain amount of time. Not only are you witnessing great speed, but you're also witnessing great velocity and great momentum when at a NASCAR or NHRA event. Two topics that we're going to focus on here in Lesson 2 video. Topics going to be covered in this film, in this little flick right here. Uh, one, the definition and the description of velocity. Two, motion of objects in relation to each other. We call that relative motion. And three, momentum. How we combine velocity and mass. Okay, so we're back at the racetrack. Speed is probably the most popular statistic that people discuss when studying, watching, or cheering on their favorite NASCAR or NHRA drag racing team. Speed is everything in those sports. Velocity is essentially speed, but we also throw in the direction of an object's motion when we're talking velocity. Technical definition is... Velocity includes the speed of an object and the direction of its motion. The standard unit for velocity is the same as speed, meters per second. There's also some more familiar ones like miles per hour, maybe kilometers per minute, kilometers per hour, a couple different versions, but the standard unit for measurement for us in science is meters per second. But we now attach a direction to it, typically north, south, east, west, northeast, Southeast, northwest, southwest, down, up, at a 45 degree angle, etc., etc., etc. You attach a direction to the speed. In NASCAR, the velocity of the race car would change nearly all of the time. Where would it change the most and where would it stay the same at times? Think about that for a second. You've got a track, typically in the form of an oval. Velocity might be maintained on a straightaway, but it constantly changes as you go around that turn. If it's more of a circle, the track's more of a circle the entire time, your velocity would always be changing because you're never going the same direction, more than maybe a half a second at a time. For a drag racer, the velocity is constant. As a drag racer, you line up on a track and you drag a straight strip. So velocity would be constant for a drag racer because they're traveling in a straight line. Velocity and speed are terms we like to associate with um, uh, some other things as well. Not just fast objects. We typically think of fast objects when we're talking velocity and speed, but we've got some other things we can use it for. Uh, for instance, uh, the movement of tectonic plates, which is very, very slow, but it still has a velocity. The flow of viscous liquids, okay? Um, the more viscous you are, the, the more resistance to flow you display. And also, we're talking about maybe some growing of plant species. You can use the term velocity. Many objects move at different rates, and we're constantly trying to compare their speeds and velocities to one another. We've learned to use reference points to establish that an object is in motion, but what happens when you choose to use a moving reference point to describe an object or multiple objects in motion? Well, then you're making everything relative. Let's compare motion of objects to both stationary, i.e. non-moving points, and also moving reference points. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about relative motion right now. And what a better place than an object that's currently moving, the vehicle I'm driving right now. Okay, so we're on our way to Marysville, and go ahead and shoot the road here. You can actually see that there's another vehicle coming towards us. Right now, we're both probably moving at 75, excuse me, not 75, about 66, 67 miles per hour down the highway. That is in relation to a fixed point, such as a sign along the side of the road, a water tower, an antenna, a house, a piece of grass, whatever. Any fixed point alongside the road, each vehicle or most of these vehicles are moving anywhere from 65 to 70 miles per hour. 
Now, if I was following somebody right now and slowly gaining on them, then our motion and relation to each other would be much different, okay? Because I am an object that's in relation, if I'm gonna compare other objects in motion to me, since I am in motion, then it has to be related to this object in motion. We've got a combine moving right here, okay? To a fixed point, that combine's moving probably a little bit slower, but right now it's moving a little bit faster because we are gaining on it. And now we're blowing right by it, all right? So when talking about motion, when we're talking about motion in regards to a fixed reference point, it's pretty simple. But it gets a little more complicated when we're talking about motion and reference to moving objects or moving reference points. Let's get Wrigley in a shot just because she's asking to. Say hi. All righty. That's it. Final topic of the day, momentum. With momentum, we're talking about a product of mass and velocity. So, how much of something is there and how fast is it moving? Momentum is typically represented in an equation by the letter P and has a standard unit of kilograms per meter over second or kilograms per meters per second. Okay, or kilograms times meters over seconds. Whatever it is, the kg and the m are over top of the s. The formula to find momentum is p equals mass times velocity. Let's take a look at some examples here. Welcome. Today, we're up here at the football field. We're going to do a little momentum demonstration here with Jake and Blake. Ooh, I didn't even recognize your guys' names, Ryan, before I got you up here. That's pretty awesome, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to have each one of these guys run at this little one-man sled, which is currently an object at rest, and we're going to demonstrate momentum, okay? Momentum being mass and velocity interacting with each other to create a product such as momentum. So uh, which one of you two has the greater mass? Me. Okay. So Blake, less mass. Jake, more mass. They're both going to roughly run the same speed at this sled. Let's see what happens to the sled. Who's first up? Blake. To do work, Blake. Anytime, baby. Do work on that sled, Blake. All right, thank you, sir. Hey, that works, dude. That worked. All right, Jake's up. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Come back together here. So, by checking out that video, who moved the sled with a little bit more force, a little bit more uh, velocity right away? This guy did, right? Why did he do that, Blake? He's got more mass. He's got more mass, okay? So a little quick demonstration about momentum. That's all we got. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Well, that does it for this video lesson, guys. Make sure you have some solid notes about the video recorded as well as completing your WSQ. Remember, I encourage you to fill out some of your notes while you're watching on the back side of that WSQ or on a separate sheet of paper. Help you write your summary. Help you write your questions. Help you to better understand these videos. Questions are always a good thing, guys. And don't be afraid to ask in class or directly email me or text me or tweet me or something during the day or during the night. Be ready to carry out some velocity and momentum calculations. That's part or one of your lab activity grades for this. And also complete a velocity and momentum um, little iMovie trailer. Okay, so a little additional activity on the side. See you later.